So today, we're going to do bridles for small ball rubbers. Now this is something that is fairly recent, spear fishing, and that's where they make the internal diameter itty weeny tiny. So it's quite difficult to get your standard bridles in there. Uh, and also when you put a standard bridle, brass ball or a plastic ball in there, it overstretches the rubber where the knot is. So there's two ways to do this. The first way I'm going to show you is with looped inserts, like this. So you can see how to make these on the other video of how to tie bridles. And they've been melted down so that's stiff and has a point. See? Nice point. Okay, this bit of cord is simply so that when you tie the knot, the loop sometimes disappears all the way into the rubber. And this is just so you can pull it back out. Okie dokie. Step, well actually before step one, I'll apologise in advance. There's going to be a lot of innuendo in this. There's no way around it. This particular how-to is going to be full of it. So, if you don't like innuendo, I recommend turning it off right now. Okay, sweet, let's go. So, the first thing you have to do when working with small ball rubber is to lubricate, stretch, and warm up the hole. See, it, it's already there. The easiest way to do this is with a long hard shaft. I use a screwdriver, you could use anything, you just want it to have about the same diameter of the knots that you're sticking in there. Now, I don't have any silicon lubricant at home, but the best thing to use is a water-based silicon lubricant. Uh, most of these can be found either at scuba diving shops for use for repairing and use for servicing of scuba diving equipment, or sex shops for use for sex. Um, it's the same stuff. It's water-based. It'll break down in water. Uh, won't eat away at the silicons because uh, a lot of your sexual things are silicon-based. Um, same as scuba diving. So either of those work perfectly fine. I don't have either of those today, so I'm going to use 101 Ointment Multibarm because I found it on the floor. It's not the right thing, but it'll do the trick. So I get some 101 Multibarm and I put it on the shaft like this. Same thing with the silicon, sex loop, whatever you're using. Then you want to apply it generously to the hole. Whilst pushing it into the hole, twisting and removing it. You want to keep doing this until the screwdriver can easily enter and exit the hole without there being too much friction. Because the easier the hole is to get into, the easier you put your knot in, and you'll be a lot less inclined to accidentally stab yourself. Less inclined probably still going to happen at least once or twice. And then once the hole is subsequently lubricated, comes the next part, forcing the knot in there. Now I'm not going to say this is going to work first time, it almost never does, but you little point, that is how you start getting the knot in. So you get the point, you ease it in until the point gets to the larger part of the knot at the back. Once it's at that point, Use your same screwdriver against the knot so that you can get some purchase and the longer cord to hold that purchase on there. Hopefully I'll do this in one or two goes, but no promises. Then you use this cord to pull it tight onto the screwdriver to minimize it slipping off. Ideally, you want one screwdriver for lube, one screwdriver for this. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna die. Eh. And in it goes. Pull out the screwdriver. Now, take some of your lubricant and apply it to the outside of the rubber. This minimizes friction when you're tying your constrictor knot. Constrictor cord. Now, constrictor knot. Down a constrictor knot, just a clove hitch or a constrictor knot, whatever you want to call it, around, over itself, back underneath, and back through. There's more complicated versions of this knot than necessary. Single will hold all day, every day, unless you mess it up. Pull it so it's a little bit tight, add your loops, because hey, 
the tighter that knot is, well, let's put it in innuendo terms. The tighter the hole, the happier you'll be. So, we do that up. And we want to do this up as tight as possible. So, I'm going to use two large screwdrivers and pull against each other. You could have a hook on the wall and use your body weight to pull down. I don't mind how you make it tight, just as long as you make it as physically tight as you possibly can. Screwdrivers and pull. So that it is as tight as you physically can, because that is what stops the knot coming out. That's not tight enough, bling, no more rubber. End of happy good speed fishing days. Okie dokie. Cut it off and burn it. By burning the ends of the knots, you're making them expand as well as melting them slightly. This stops them from pulling through easily. So even under large amounts of pressure, you're less inclined to have any unfortunate events. Next step, pull that back out. Pull that through. You've got your loop. Ta-da! Okay, now I'm gonna do the other side. I'll probably do it in fast forward. Because hey, we all wanna watch a 20 minute video on how to do this, and then we'll get up to the next stage and we'll go slowly again. So, I might put some music on and you can just watch me do the other side. Okay. two loops. Ideally it's best to have them the same length. I just accidentally made this knot a bit closer. It's not the end of the world. When it loads it will still want to sit even. Your mono will just be a little bit one way or the other. So now we do the mono. The reason we use these loops is when your mono snaps from loading incorrectly, which is usually when you slide it over the notch and gets cut, you can replace it and then Spear again, and there's not an issue. So, just some standard real line, mono, whatever you want to use. Mono, why am I saying mono? Dyneema. <laughs> okay, so just some nice standard Dyneema. We're gonna use some of this stuff today because I have left over. Cut it a bit longer than what you need. Ah. And now you're gonna loop it through those loops, creating a resistance fit knot that stops it from undoing. So. First things first, you go through the loop. Like that. See how you through the loop? Then you're gonna go around the loop. Doesn't matter which way. Left, right, meh, I don't care. All the way around the loop. Coming back around and through itself. Like this. Then when this pulls, see how it does pressure up and does the knot up. Ta-da! Replaced. What I like to do is also put another little knot on this end, just to make sure it can't undo without your permission. So, I'll do that today, just so you can see. Pull a bit extra through, tie a standard little tiny baby knot, like that, pull this tight again, pull that knot tight. Now even if this slips, it's not gonna pull this knot through, can't. Just double safety. Cut that off. Man, I think I should replace these scissors. There we go. Burn it back. Not just because my cut was horrendous, but again, it stops that other knot coming undone. Triple safety. <laughs> it's hard to blow through one of these things. Okay, now you do the other side. Exactly the same process. You're gonna go through the loop. Get it to about where you want it to be, then go all the way around, back through itself. Ta-da! It's your bridle. 
Now, when that gets broken, or worn, or you need to replace it, all you do, this little top part of the knot here, hold your Dyneema, push that, it'll come loose. Undo it, and put a new one in there. And you don't have to cut any knots in your rubber, or retie anything, or go through a big rigmarole. You just need a new bit of your reel, back through the loop. You can do this in the water if you have to. I've seen guys do it. I've had to do it. And then around, back through, pull tight, add stopper knot, just as a backup. Again, push the stopper knot so that it's as close to your hitch as possible. And it can never pull through. Cut it off with your incredibly blunt scissors, preferably yours aren't so blunt. Burn it. Well, you can't do the burning part in the water, I'll take that back, but that's just an extra bit. <laughs> Blow it out. You have yourself an excessively long, but small ball rubber with easily replaceable bridle, which is Dyneema. I'm sure I've been saying mono, but I'm just slightly not all there, as I'm sure you've picked up. So just use the word I mean to say, not the word I actually say sometimes. Well, hopefully that helps you out. Um, small balls becoming a lot more popular. Heaps of people are starting to use it because you get more rubber for your thickness. Why waste all that internal hole size when you don't have to? So yeah, um, ta-da! Hope this helps. 